The Lord wants to save not just you, but your family members. Amen. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, Paul said this uh, to the jailer because God shook the, that night. God shook uh, the prison cells and uh, everyone's bonds were loosed and they were set free. And then uh, the jailer realized that the law of the Romans is that if, if anyone escapes under your watch, you will die in that person's place. And uh, he realized he was about to kill himself, you know, commit harakiri. And he was about to stab himself with a sword and, and, and Paul shouted, right, don't do yourself no harm. We are all here. Amen. And this is what Paul said to him. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be safe and your house. Do you see that? Yes, of course. Every member in your family must believe as well. Because later on we read that, that uh, the jailer actually brought Paul and his friends back to his house and uh, treated, treated their, their wounds because they were beaten with stripes, treated their wounds and then and, uh, served them meal. And uh, the Bible says his entire household believed. Not just him, his entire household believed. So my friend, it's important that we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ because, you know, not only God will save us, but God will save our family members. Once you believe on Jesus, even though you are persecuted by them, amen, there, there is like an open door in your family because of you. They might, not, they might not see that. They might not see that this whole thing is for their own benefit, their own blessing. They might persecute, say names about you, amen, make fun of you. But child of God, remember this, because of you, there is now a big, like a big hole in your family for God to come in and bless every one of them. Amen. And save every one of them. Amen. And give them a brand new life, even the life more abundant that Jesus came to give. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We see also the same thing for Noah and his family. God said to Noah, come into the ark, you and your family, you and your house. Notice that God's plan is not just to save Noah in the ark from the flood, from the floods of judgment, but to save his entire family. But notice what God says, for you, singular, have I seen righteous. So even though the Bible doesn't say that his entire family is righteous, but because of that one man, Noah, God says your entire family will be safe. So I'm not saying it's automatic, your family will be safe because you are safe. But what I'm saying is that it's so easy for them to be safe because of you. Amen. Because you are saved, now there's an open door for God to move into their lives and touch them. Amen. God's going to do amazing things this season. Even during this time, there's going to be miracles of restoration of relationships within the family. God's going to give you a brand new marriage. Amen. He's going to turn that water into intoxicating wine and uh, you'll be falling in love with each other again. But it's all because of the presence of the Lord in your life family, in your marriage. And I'm excited. I want to start off by sharing with you a testimony that just came in. And uh, this sister is from United States and she shares, my children were raised in a Christian home and saved at a young age. A couple of years ago, my 20-year-old daughter left home, stopped communicating with our family and ventured into drugs, cults, and other inappropriate behaviors. She was also suffering from anxiety and panic attacks. It was devastating to see her like that because if you knew her, she was the sweetest, most beautiful daughter anyone could ask for. My younger daughter was also going through a lot in school and was acting out. Lying constantly, sneaking around and participating in harmful behaviors. They both wanted nothing to do with the things of God and were putting themselves and their family in danger. It was so sad and discouraging. I love them both and I want the best for them, to live free from the constant hurt and pain. It seemed like my relationship with them had been damaged and irreversibly broken. I wrote in to Pastor Prince's ministry a few times, asking for prayer for my daughters. I prayed for protection, healing, restoration and deliverance for them and our family. I believe that despite their behaviors and what they believe about themselves, they were still the righteousness of God in Christ, redeemed, forgiven, and cleansed. I pleaded the blood of Jesus over them and declared for their hearts to turn back to God and their family. The Lord answered our prayers 
and restored our relationships. My daughters and I now have better relationships than before. We communicate honestly, love each other, and most importantly, we simply rest in Jesus' love. I know it was by God's grace that our relationships have been restored. I continue to believe the Lord for more and more favour in this area, and I continue to declare more blessings in our relationships with each other and with all we come in contact with. Thank you, Pastor Prince, for your amazing ministry full of love and the beautiful grace of God. Well, to God be the glory, amen. It is His wonderful gospel of grace. Notice that the mother kept on looking, there, looking at them, viewing them with the, eyes of, with the eyes of love, the way that God would view them, amen. He did not see them as rebellious, as uh, wayward, as uh, hard-hearted. No, she kept on looking at them the way God saw them, the righteousness of God in Christ, and she called it forth. She kept on declaring that. Um, and the Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. All things have become new. Now, that is the theme verse for our church. That's why our church is called New Creation Church, because of this 2 Corinthians 5.17 verse. But notice it starts with, Therefore. Therefore, if any man be in Christ. What is the verse preceding that? Because whenever you see a therefore, you ask what was the verse before that? Because whatever the verse was before that, it's because of that verse, therefore, in light of that verse, if anyone is in Christ, it's a new creation. Well, if you look at that verse, it says this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that's verse 17. But look at verse 16, the verse before that. It says, therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know Him thus no longer. Look at this verse again. We regard no one according to the flesh. Now, another version says it like this. We regard no one from a human point of view. That, that includes our, our families, amen, our, our relationship with our spouse, uh, with one another, amen. We regard no man from a human point of view. Amen. Now, if they're not saved, they're not, uh, they're not born again, of course, it's a different perspective. They're not a new creation. But I'm talking about people who are new creation, even though they, are, they, have, they have gone astray. Amen. We are still to view them as a new creation and don't regard them in the flesh. Don't view them according to the flesh and call forth what God sees. Amen. For the people of God in the last days, the very last chapter says, Unto you that fear my name shall the Son, S-U-N, referring to Jesus, the Son of Righteousness, arise with healing in His wings. Hallelujah. Amen. Unto you that fear my name, God says, Jesus will shine so bright on you, you cannot but be healed. Hallelujah. And I'm, I'm seeing that happen already. Praise the Lord. In the, in, in the lives of the people that uh, have written in. And uh, I want to share another testimony. And this is going to bless you. This is a sister from US. And she's, she shares, Last year was a tough year for me and my family. My husband of seven years became angry with me and we started fighting frequently. Our marital problems weighed on me until I contemplated suicide. I kept thinking that I was worthless because nothing I did pleased my husband. I later discovered that my husband had been having an emotional affair with another woman for about six months and he was preparing to leave me. When I confronted him about this, we had the biggest fight ever. I felt depressed and confused. He even con confessed to not caring about me and to being okay with the idea of leaving me and his sons behind. He seemed like a different person that I did not recognize. I prayed and asked the Lord to help me turn the situation around. Even though my heart hurt and suicide was constantly on my mind, I fought off those thoughts and was ready to leave my husband. I planned to transfer my son to another school and started packing our belongings. I was in the car when I heard a voice tell me, wait. I started watching videos of Pastor Prince's sermons and cried so hard because I felt God's love flowing through his preaching. It made me feel stronger and everything I was going through didn't seem that bad. In one of Pastor Prince's sermons, he said, God has already answered our prayers and we can be thankful. 
He also said to go to Jesus in our dark times because He's always there when we need Him. I began to declare my family is restored and thank God that the doors to infidelity were closed. I thank the Lord that my sons will have a father, a happy family, and a home to come back to. This was my heart's desire, and I knew God would turn things around for my family. Today, I can humbly say that my marriage has been saved. My husband stopped his infidelity, and we are rebuilding our relationship. Our love, trust, and respect for each other are growing deeper, and I know it is all the Lord's doing. My oldest son is now doing better in school. Thank you, Pastor Prince, for your teachings. They have truly opened my heart to God and I've never felt so close to Him in my life. Hallelujah, praise God. To God really be all the glory and the praise. Only God can do this. Amen. But it's important that we are listening to messages that proclaim the true God. Amen. Not some, some figment of someone's imagination or religious teachings of the past that, that is erroneous, but the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the true God. Amen. When we see Him, his, the primary thing that we see about Him, His essence is love. Yes, He is holy, He is righteous, but His essence, the very thing, the very being of God is love. Amen. God is thrice holy, God is righteous, and God is altogether beautiful. And we worship Him, amen, in spirit and in truth when we see that. But He is love in His essence, amen. And what does love do? Love keeps on giving. Love keeps on supplying. Love keeps on doing. And that's what being under grace is all about. Hi, I hope you were blessed and encouraged by this video. If you were impacted by this message, let us know by liking it and leaving a comment below. Lastly, feel free to subscribe to get more inspirational content every week. See you again real soon. God bless you.